outside on the little tiny streets that link this correctional institution together, the most abysmal drivers in the entire country have been treating vehicles in ways that I consider criminal. What they did to that poor Porsche, I'm telling you, it's going to haunt me forever. I can't even think about what they did to the Jaguar. Yeah, that one was really bad. And the stick shift? That car went up in smoke. That's why I'm in here. I feel a lot safer in here. This is Canada's worst driver. This season, we brought the candidates for Canada's worst driver to a defunct prison in Guelph, Ontario. In episode one, Ashley from Medicine Hat, Alberta, got a taste of the lockup after she thought it would be fun to race now to street race on her way here. I could have killed somebody. I could end up in jail. During her wailing stay in rehab, Ashley has proven to be the most volatile driver we've ever dealt with. I'm gonna lose it! I'm pissed! I'm choked! Shut up! I don't want to talk to you! Just f off! For f sake! Ugh. When our teenage nominee got to rehab, Tegan also experienced prison life. Because this Edmontonian admitted to repeatedly hitting and running. You've done about ten hit and runs, right? Yeah, around there. Like, it's just side swipes, some paint left, that type of thing. It's hard to notice sometimes, but Tegan is getting better. I came on the show to get better, and I think I'm getting, well, I know I'm getting better. Oh my god. If crying while driving was a crime, Amy, from the tiny town of Bethune, Saskatchewan, would spend life in prison. Behind the wheel, Amy weeps so much, she could be considered legally impaired. I'm just really fine. Amy is getting more confident. I'm... What would you like me to do? But it's a long, lonely road. I don't even know how good it is not to be that nervous before you get into that car. Oh! And the last nominee for Canada's worst driver might be the worst. Whatever. Emily from Calgary needs help with all aspects of driving. Whatever. But what she really needs... I cannot say anything. Oh. ...is glasses. This is the last show before our final episode. So, today's lessons and challenges will be the toughest so far. Ooh. Today, we're starting things off with our annual Eye of the Needle steering test. This is a 1990 Chevy G10 van. And this is a hole that's slightly bigger than a 1990 Chevy G10 van. Do you think you could drive this vehicle through this hole? That's the next challenge for Canada's worst drivers. Actually, they'll have to thread their way through four of our arches. I'll do it first by focusing on the biggest rule of safe driving. And the biggest rule of safe driving is look where you want to go. So am I looking at the arches? No, because if I look at the arches, I will be drawn to the arch. I want to look into the gap between the arch. 50 kilometers an hour. 
Here we go. Keeping an eye on the speedometer is very important as we get up. I'm at 35, 40, 45, 50. Look. Ooh, I ducked. You see me duck as I swish through? I get scared. Ooh. Perfect. No challenge spooks me more than the eye of the needle. But if Canada's worst drivers keep their wits about them, they can do this too. Amy's up first. Where are you looking? Where I want to be. Amy understands the principle of safe driving. Okay. But in reality, she's too slow. And she drifts to the right. Oh. I killed you. Amy knew where to look, but she forgot to look there. So I wasn't really watching where I was going. And that says it all, doesn't it? I wasn't looking where I was going. That's Dr. Luisa Gambora, a race car driving psychologist. If Amy can stay calm, I think she can do this. Dr. Gambora is part of our team of driving experts, along with Dan Baggin, our head driving instructor, and Philippe Letourneau, our high performance driving instructor. She should be looking straight ahead where she wants the car to go. Rounding out our expert crew is Sergeant Cam Woolley of the Ontario Provincial Police. This is a simple maneuver that we encounter as drivers every day. Got to drive along, you find a narrow area, you go through. At the end of this episode, the experts will help me decide which three people will be in the finals for Canada's worst driver. On Amy's second run at the eye of the needle, she hits twice, but the arches stay standing. Well, it's the right speed, but it's the wrong sound. They're all standing. Third trip down the runway. Will she go through the arches, or will she go through the arches? Amy swishes through the first three arches, but... Oh. Me. How did I hit that one? When we met Amy, this would have made her cry. Back to the beginning. Holy Okay. I'd hate to see him in Montreal, going through the tunnels. On her fourth run, Amy starts with swishes, and she ends with a... Swish! And 55! She stayed calm. She looked where she was going. Success. Amy is a far cry from the teary-eyed driver Bob nominated. What did you think when she got in? Honestly, I thought she'd have a breakdown. Where's the tears? She held together. Don't even start. Wobbly Tegan is up next. You, no wobble. All right. Mm, no wobble. No. If Tegan drove this van at 100 kilometers an hour, his wobble would cause a rollover. Holy Holy Stop. I think you might have hit the last one a little. That's scary. Steering smooth? Are you doing a lot of this? Uh, a lot smoother than I've been driving. Second run, do it clean and smooth this time. Look how tense he is. Look at his hands. Oh, you. Oh. <laughs> On his third attempt, go! Tegan looks where he wants to go, and his wobble subsides. I did it. Tegan is definitely getting better. Tegan, are you Canada's wrist driver? No, I'm not Canada's wrist driver. After the break, we see what Emily can do. Oh my god! Canada's worst drivers are struggling not to get into our final episode.
next to see if she can thread the eye of the needle is Ashley. Ashley's problem isn't her driving skill. Her problem is controlling her emotions. While Ashley slips into some sensible footwear, Brian slips into his role as arch driving advisor. Just look right through him, okay? Okay. Power on it. 50. If she continues like this, Ashley will be a shoe in for graduation. Check out the new style. <laughs> Gotta be the shoes. Yeah. The last person to try this challenge is Emily. Go whenever you're ready! Emily approaches the first arch going just 29K an hour. Keep going. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. You didn't look in the middle? I look in the middle. Emily looked underneath the dashboard. Do you know where, where you hit? No. Scott knows. Tell her. Right in front of me. <laughs> How many times? Every time. Yeah. Four in a row. Probably just in a car, just like too big. And, uh... None of the car fits. Hitting on the passenger side is something we've grown to expect here at the rehab center. This year, there's been 12 hits, and all but one of them have been on the passenger side. Here's what happens. The natural instinct of a bad driver is to put their own body in the middle of the arch. It feels safer for them, but it puts their passenger in harm's way. If you put your own self in the middle, yeah. you're putting Scott on the edge. Mm. Okay, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Okay, you're at 50. Keep going. A little, little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. A little bit more, a little bit more. Oh, that one was perfect. This one's going to be perfect. Once again, Emily's fear of failure makes her blind. She's ducking a lot. One of the reasons you're not steering right is because you're ducking. Okay, next time. Okay, I won't do that. <laughs> next time's right now. Faster, faster. Oh, don't duck. Emily, don't duck. Ah! You ducked again. Ah! Hi. <laughs> Why did you duck? I don't know. I'm still not good for you know, judging judge, you know, the distance, something like that. I think I still have some problem for, for that. Emily has a problem judging distance because she needs glasses. Oh, my God! How can I do it? Due to technical difficulties, this might be Emily's last run. Because that's it. We're out of foam. <laughs> I don't want to be the worst. <laughs> oh, my God. Emily's repetitive passenger side crashes more your side, more your side, more your side, are making more your a side, serious more impact side. on Scott. More to your side, more to your side, more! Uh, I feel not a judge, okay, honey? I'm sorry. We've arranged for Emily to get glasses right now. Oh, oh my God! At the eye doctor's office, Emily learns why she can't judge distances. My eye balance is different. And the one is like 50, and another one is 200, so it's quite different. The bottom line? I should have, well, glasses. How does it look like? What do you think is one? Emily makes a decision and sees the light. Yeah, I can see enough things right now. She can see. Yay. Before, I'm not a brand, okay? Just not that clear. If you have to move house, maybe you should rent a trailer. Or maybe you shouldn't. We're about to see. The next challenge for Canada's worst drivers is to tow a trailer around a simple course. Well, it's simple if you know how to do it. To teach the nominees how to reverse a trailer, 
our head instructor, Dan, is giving one-on-one -on -one lessons. When you're trying to back up a trailer, steering is almost exactly opposite. It's mind-bending, but true. If you steer to the right while reversing, the trailer will go to the left. Yeah, you want it to turn right, you have to turn the truck left. This way to put it that way. You got it. This is so bizarre. If you don't fix it, the trailer will jackknife. So the only way to straighten it is by going forward. Oh. This year, drivers have to pull out of this laneway, then move forward and turn onto this straightaway, which leads to a hairpin turn, which leads to a final reverse into the loading zone. To start, I want to come out and make the trailer follow me. To do that, I need to take this turn wide. Because on a corner, a trailer will turn sharper than the truck towing it. Again, I'm going to take this turn as wide as humanly possible. The next corner cannot be done in one try, no matter how wide you take it. I can't make this turn. Not a chance. In rehab, all the drivers have learned to shift a vehicle laterally using an S-turn. You go a little to the left, then a little to the right, then back straight up. The S-turns work with the trailer as well, people. It's not just for single vehicles. Now, I think I can make this turn. I'm through. Ooh-wee. To back into the final parking space. So I turn to the left to make it go to the right. I just got to make sure that I don't cream something on this side. I am a happy camper. Because I, ladies and gentlemen, am done. Woo! And if you want me to help you move, mm, no, not doing it. This chore took me 23 minutes, and I hit nothing. Let's see how Canada's worst drivers do. Emily says she doesn't want to wear her new glasses. What do you see that sign say right there? I don't know. Put, put your glasses on. I love your new glasses. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. I cannot say anything now. Scott has noticed that before every challenge, we always point the vehicle's wheels off to one side. Don't move. How is your, your corner there? My call is here is good. It's very close. Well, stop a sec. How close is it? It's an ugly start, but Scott remains supportive. You know, take it wide. Not this wide. Emily gets to the hairpin turn, where she snags her bumper on a parked car's decorative side stripe. Okay, no. Oh! That's one way to remove side stripes. Custom by Crunch. Okay, more you. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, more me. More you, more you, more you, more you. More me, more me, more me, me, me. Okay, let her drive. Let her drive. There's only five feet left. Oh, no, 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 no. We need to walk it together. No, you need to drive alone. No, I can't. And to think she could have got her friends to do this for a case of beer. That's how you move in Canada. You buy people beer. You don't need to get a trailer. It's okay. Done. Would Emily have finished without Scott's help? Oh, no, not at all. He helped me, still, so I'm doing right. Still, I'm 10, 10, 10, still, it's good for me. I'm proud of myself, actually. Thank you. When we come back, Ashley has a session with Dr. Gimbora. So, this is probably the first time. You're talking with someone who's a psychologist, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ever since meeting Ashley in Medicine Hat, Alberta... Go f*** What is your f***ing problem today? We've known that her biggest problem behind the wheel... Shut up! You're making me do thing! ...is how she deals with her husband. Stab you. Uh, I keep divorce papers in the glove box. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty intense sometimes when we're driving. Is fighting part of your relationship or is that just, just in the driving? Just in the driving. Just in the car. When Ashley directed rage towards her husband back on day one. Why don't you say something instead of being a dick? I thought she could benefit from professional help. There's a psychologist here. I guess you need to see that person. I'm not crazy. No, I'm not! <laughs> 
Ashley's not crazy. You're supposed to be my husband! But Brian does drive Ashley, well, to the point of despair. Just shut up in the flask Get the f out of the car. Ashley's volatile relationship with her husband. Ah! I better now. Is the only thing that stands between her and graduation. So? Hi there. Hi. Ashley has finally agreed to professional help. So this is probably the first time you're talking with someone who's a psychologist, right? Oh, yeah. The doctor wants Ashley to learn new ways of communicating with her husband. When you're in the car, you're shouting at each other. Yeah. You're shouting at each other. I think it's just like our lifestyle. Like, that's how we are. Like, that's how we've always been. And it's hurtful. I'm the kind of person that I cannot hold it in because it's just bad if I hold it in. So with Brian, I can vent, I can let it out, I can say what I need to say. It's wonderful to be open with your husband, but a little bit of diplomacy wouldn't hurt either. I don't know why I feel so good to vent, though. Venting hurts. Venting may feel good, but if you're venting and you're dumping on your partner and vice versa, that hurts. Mm -hmm. Ashley has explained to Brian that whenever they're in the vehicle from now on, he must be less of a rig pig Stop. and more of a sweetheart. You want to bring it in and swoop out so you can bring your trailer in like this, okay? All right, sugar plum. All right, honeydew melon. Oh, honeydew melon, that's my favorite. <laughs> they might be kidding about their sweetness. I'm sorry, sugar plum. But Ashley and Brian have made it to the hairpin turn without fighting. I don't care which way you turn the wheel. Well, you no, know, I do because this is how it gets done. Sugar plum. If I say not so hard, then not go start countering it, going the other way a little bit. That's not your happy <laughs> voice. <laughs> I'm trying. Uh, I know you're trying. I know you're trying. I'm trying to because I love you so much. No stress. No don't stress. worry, sugar plum. Okay, you're off the ramp, Ashley. I, I can't see the ramp. You can't see it, so you kind of have to guess. Or she could get out and look. That doesn't make sense. It makes a lot of sense. Just stop, because I'm freaking out okay, over go nothing forward, go now. Forward, go forward, I'm forward. freaking out over nothing. Go forward, see, forward. This is what happens. I pick everything up. I can't do this. Is that the way you need to cut it in? Yes, because I'm going it. hard left and the trailer then in. Then do it. Brian, it's not your happy voice. I can't I was, help. My happy voice is in my ass right now. Brian, stop it. You are fine until now. And all of a sudden you're a dick again. Maybe he, he wants his wife to stay bad at driving so he can feel good. Stop. Hard, hard left stop. And, then, and then straighten yourself out. Don't just leave yourself stop. out. Stop. Stop yelling at okay. me. You're trying to be a dick. Uh, Ugh, fine. Having Brian beside her is still explosive for Ashley. I think bottling it up is tougher, though. I think, I think I know it's healthy to let it out. Tegan has got something to prove. I'm not a as a striper. I'm getting the out of here, man. I can do it. From the starting point, okay. Tegan easily makes his way to the hairpin turn. How are you going to do this one? I should turn, reverse, Go forward again like an S. Tegan has learned a lot in rehab. What are you doing? Surely they got to screen it out. Now that was pretty good. It took less than one one turn to get that done. When he pulls into the final parking space, big. Tegan's error-free run is the quickest so far. Congratulations. Did you think you could do it? I knew I could do it. Amy's husband drives a big rig trailer. Why are you turning that way? Amy is understandably intimidated by Bob's driving resume. Okay, now, cranky wheel. That way? We're gonna, well, will we go that way? But she needs to think for herself. Staying tight on this side. At the hairpin turn. What do I do? Miscommunication gets Amy badly wedged in. So how do I? Well, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? You're the trucker. That's the only way you're going to get it, I think, is by internet here. 
I'm jackknife. I can't pull ahead to straighten out. Like, I'm right... We're in a predicament. Do you know how stupid you sound, Mr. Truck Driver? You were supposed to help me. We are so... Yeah, I've called for a tow truck. Steer the other way, other way, other way, other way, well, other way, other way. Well, I was steering that way. Were you? Hmm. Originally, and it was getting worse. Amy. I was doing it that way, and I went that way, and you tell me other way, other way, other way, other way. So, like, what do you want? I'm not listening to you. Yell. This is your living. Tell me what I'm supposed to do. You don't you. listen anyway when I tell you to do something. What the f is the sense in telling you? I don't know what else you want me to do. I want you to get us around this. Then okay. tell me how. It takes 13 minutes. Keep going back. But Amy manages to back up all the way to the beginning of the turn. What do I do? <laughs> don't start crying. <laughs> Okay, we need to figure this out. Sweet exactly. Pivot. This time... Go, 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 go. She makes it easily around the corner. Holy... Unbelievable. What a wreck. Getting into the final parking spot... Why are you going back that way? It's a full-on battle for control. No, what are you doing? I was trying to straighten it so I can go this way. I want you to weave it in here. Oh, I was just trying to line it up. Well, talking to you is like... Why? You know what? Oh, Chase, you pull ahead to straighten yourself when you jackknife. Okay, you tell me how to drive. Well, I'm, that's what I was taught today. Right there. Whoa. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, stop being a... Amy's confidence <laughs> is still easily broken. I shouldn't ask my husband for help. Because I came in knowing what the to do after I kind of stopped listening to my husband you want to know something I got out of it when we return our donut challenge makes the sweet duck go sour out get the out whatever how to control a rear wheel skid while accelerating is the next challenge for Canada's worst drivers. To put that in layman's terms, we're going to be doing donuts. We're teaching donuts so drivers can learn how to safely get out of a rear end skid. Ay ay ay. I haven't done donuts since the show last year. So I'm going to go around the loop-de-loo once, and then I'm going to turn hard left and punch the gas pedal to the floor. You're going to always keep your eyes where you want to end up at the end. Exactly. When I start spinning out, I'll have to feather off the gas and steer out of the sharp turn. So you're going to need to open up, basically, counters. To open up. Let go of the gas? And go. No, give her. Counters to your counters here. Now I'm just heading the wrong way. So I go the other way? Here we go. Keep looking, keep looking, keep looking. And now I counter steer. Now I go this way. Here we go. Wow. Piece of cake. Good car control, actually. I was very impressed. Well, I'll tell you, I've been hosting this show for four years, and I'm becoming a better driver. These challenges really work. Hi, Ashley. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. If you look straight ahead, you'll never do a donut. Counter steer. Oh! <sighs> where were you looking? Straight. Straight. Where, where are we now? Straight. Straight. Yeah. <laughs> when all the drivers learn how to lose traction in their rear wheels... Punch it. Punch it. Punch it. Whoa. What did you punch? The brake. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, when all the drivers learn how to do a donut... Down the gas, down the gas, down the gas. Look where you want to go. Down the gas, down the gas, down the gas. And... Oh, yeah. It's time for the challenge. That almost made me puke. Steering around an obstacle means this donut will have to be wider than the one I did in my lesson. Then you plunge it, you feel your back end go, then look where you want to steer. My donut might not be the prettiest in the box, but my wheels keep spinning and I don't hit the wall. Woo, 
I don't think there's a career in stunt driving for me, but I can do a donut when the chips are down. Can Canada's worst drivers do it? Learning donuts teaches you skid control, and that's, that's a survival skill we need here in Canada. Tegan will be driving me today because his buddy Matt has a sore neck. Get in and show me how it's done, sir. Okay. On his first two tries... Whoa. That's tricky. Tegan floors the gas pedal relentlessly. I think I'm gassing it too hard and cranking the wheel too much. Bingo. Okay. To get Tegan to stop holding the gas pedal down like this, I explain what he's making the wheels do. They go faster and faster and faster till they reach their maximum speed, right? Right. So if you step on it, full on, they go really fast, and then for the next, what, six seconds, they're just going faster and faster and faster and faster. So you're stomping on that gas, believing that you're maintaining your speed, where in fact it's increasing all the time. Okay. The trick is to stomp on the gas, then feather off of it lightly. That's good. Feel that? Feel that difference? You feel that difference, though. Yeah, it's a lot better. Huge difference. Tegan's next three attempts all begin with good counter-steering, but they all wind up in disaster. Hit the wall. Yeah, I noticed. You know, every year we have people accuse us of hiring actors. You're not acting, right? You're not some nasty sketch comedian having me on, are you? What do you mean sketch comedian? It's, uh... Technically, it's, it's not that bad. If you look at the, the wheels, he's actually counter-steering, which is pretty good. So he's definitely technically getting better. This time, Tegan starts perfectly. Yep, yep. Yes, this is the one, Tegan. This is the one, buddy. This is the one, 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 this is the one. Woohoo! Yeah, man! Sweet. Yeah, man! Tegan's car control has improved immensely. First and only time driving a Mustang. I'll cherish it for the rest of my life. After the break, more donuts. Ah! I was doing better, but I killed her. If Ashley is still in rehab for our final episode, she'll miss her son's first birthday. Just give me gas. Lost gas. Lost gas. Start steering the other way. Start steering. What are you doing? Ryan! I tried steering the other way. Once the back tires are spinning, you gotta steer with the car. I got that. Tell me when to punch it, then. Oh, punch it. Let off, let off, let off, let off, let off. Oh! I gotta get out. I did oh, not start going on you the did not do it. You did not do it, Ashley. Brian's tone will not help her do it. Get out. I'll do it on my own. Get out. Get out. All right. I'm gonna do it on my own. I don't need you. She ever kicked you out of the car before? Lots. Lots. Yeah. She's never kicked me out. Wrong. I'm just gonna watch. Okay. You guys pack your jammies. Get ready. Mm hmm Punch it. Exactly. Whoa! Come on, spin, baby, spin. Kind of wrong because I stopped there. Ashley's mistake has been holding down the gas pedal. I want Ashley to feather off the gas when she starts spinning out. you got to find the, find the magic spot, right? Yeah. Punch it. Lightly feather it off. Ashley's learning, so I'm leaving. I'm putting Brian in. Okay. Brian can get in under one condition. You have to be quiet the whole time. Yeah, yeah, I'll be quiet, babe. Listen to Brian's version of being quiet. Keep, keep the gas, 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 gas. Oh. <gasps> Relax okay. in your circle. No, no talking. I'm trying to keep you calm. Like... How are you keeping me calm? You stress me out. Wow. How? 
Oh, don't get mad at me because you can't do it. More than driving lessons, this couple needs therapy. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! I don't want to hear a part. No, because you don't just tell me something. Demand it. So just demand it. Shut up! I'm gonna do this by myself. You shut up and just do it then. Out! Get the out! Whatever. You. Ashley understands her biggest driving problem, but Brian needs it explained to him. I tried to explain to her is that she wiped out in this spot so many times that all the gravel got pushed off, and then that's where she kept on trying to do it. So well, maybe it it's because explaining to her, because you were explaining to her like this, I get pissed off too. But it's so frustrating because she just won't listen. Well, I try to be frustrating if somebody's talking to me like that, and they kept on saying, "Why do you listen? Why do you listen?" I bet I would be going, "I guess I don't like the tone, man." Yeah. It's a rig pig. Grab my shoes. Amy is scared of doing donuts. I get sick. I almost puked with sleep in the car. With her husband in the car, Amy spins out over a dozen times because she's turning the wheel as far as it will go and just leaving it there. You can't just hold it cranked, though. So I have to steer it the other way? Trying to counter steer... Stop her. Things get worse. Ah! I was doing better, but I killed her. When Amy's not spinning out of control, she's building up her courage by driving endless laps around and around the obstacle. Give her. I'll give her when I'm ready, okay? Oh, bring her up. Oh my. Okay. Please be quiet so I can concentrate. Okay? Stop complaining. I'm just trying. Okay, psycho. I'm not psycho, but you're sitting there complaining. With 35 failed attempts under her belt, Amy finally gets one right, but she shouldn't be steering with one hand. Amy's success is somewhat surprising. Do you think it was going to happen? I was having my doubts, I was getting dizzier and dizzier. Emily starts by going off course. Inside, inside. Where are you going? Oh. Maybe her new glasses aren't working. Oh, f How come it's not here? How come it's not here? How come Emily thinks turning the wheel as far as it will go every time will eventually result in success? What? Remember to steer. I already all left. The walk can go. Emily says she's steering. No, steer, steer, steer. I steer it. But she doesn't really know how to steer. Oh, see? What's wrong with the car? I don't understand. It's not the car. Okay, what's wrong with me? I'd like to answer that question, but Emily doesn't see me. Well, maybe they're not the best glasses in the world. Ah! You killed somebody. Whatever. Donuts leave a bad taste in Emily's mouth. I don't like it. I hate it. After the break, we name the finalists for Canada's worst driver. Which of these people would you not include? <laughs> the four most abysmal motorists in the country are all trying to avoid a head-on collision with the title Canada's worst driver. Now it's time for the experts to choose who will get their license back as the final graduate before our ultimate episode. I saw a moment where you actually got it with the donuts. Cam saw the same thing. Well, uh, actually, Tegan, I was pretty impressed with how you did it on, on the donuts. That was good. You had uh, excellent steering. Do you deserve to graduate this episode? 
I improved in a lot of things. I hope I graduate tonight. And that'd be great. Does Ashley deserve to graduate? I think I do. What are Amy's chances? It's like a 60-40. Emily's biggest improvement in rehab has been her vision. Uh, for like a driver, of course, I need glasses. Of course. Will you graduate? I hope so. Yeah. In this episode's trailer reversing, Tegan did the best. And in the donut challenge, Tegan succeeded in the fewest attempts. But in the eye of the needle, Ashley was perfect. And in every challenge, Amy was the second best. So, who will graduate? Well, I'm going to go with Tegan. He wasn't the best driver in every challenge, but he's improved a lot. Even though he hit the eye of the needle. Yeah, he did. But he did uh, well in the donuts, and he did very well with the uh, trailer hitch. When I look at, at the combined results, I think he, uh, he wins, but only by a bit. Dr. Gambora disagrees. Even though she's still extremely volatile, I think Ashley has finally seen the light that she needs to control her emotions. Ashley, I think, is a much better driver, but she was a mess. She melted down, especially with her husband in the car. I think we need to keep her here. <gasps> Uh, I think I'm going to go with Amy. I think overall she's the most cautious driver. This decision is going to be controversial, but the experts have to decide who deserves to get their driver's license back. Canada's worst drivers are lined up in the parade ground, which means it's time for one more person to get their license back and be released onto public roads. Tegan looks nervous. When you showed up here, you were absolutely the worst driver. But along the road, we've learned that you can learn, and for that simple reason, buddy, you're not Canada's worst driver. <laughs> Take your license back. What? Thank you. What? What? What do the other nominees want? They're all horrible drivers. I don't want to hug you. <laughs> Before coming to rehab, Holy. Tegan was truly dangerous. Under our supervision, you have to get into the turning lane. So signal, check your side mirror, your blind spot. Tegan has made enough progress good? to be our best remaining driver. I did it. His reversing skills have improved immensely. Drive straight. Good. Huh? His pedal control, which was so bad in the early days, is now completely sorted out. Even Tegan's terrifying wobble is under control. I take breathing exercises and I just, I don't know, it's a lot better now. With these newfound skills, Tegan's world is about to get bigger. Honestly, yeah, being a better driver will change my life because I can go to places I never could go to before. Enjoy your newfound driving skills, buddy. <laughs> Do it. You are not deserve to leave. For the three candidates left behind, being in our final episode is a bitter pill to swallow. One of them is Canada's worst driver. just happened on the next and final episode of Canada's worst driver the nominees show us how precise their steering is they get pushed to the limit I was going down in our mega challenge shut up and listen I don't want to do this anymore and after driving through downtown Toronto crazy town Someone gets branded with our ugly title, Canada's Worst Driver. That car's coming, that car's coming.
哎呀 ，My God！ 